In this era of concern about the quality of our environment, the preservation of agricultural lands, regional land use plans, the green belt programs, and so on, what, in fact, do we have by way of comprehensive information about the land itself? Do we have such a thing as a land inventory? Well, the answer to that is uh, it's on its way. And our guest today is a man very much concerned with compiling that inventory, Mr. Gary Runka, land inventory specialist with the British Columbia Department of Agriculture. Gary, what is this land inventory all about? Well, to answer your question, with reference to the current land inventory, uh, we might glance at the diversity of BC's landscape, uh, the uh, land use problems that we have in this province, or some of them at least, and a look at the ability of the land to uh, carry various uses. When, uh, when did this land inventory actually start, Gary? Actually, we started in British Columbia in the uh, Oh, almost the mid-60s, although I believe it was 63 or 64. And it has been going on with a uh, small staff of uh, different departments of both federal and provincial governments. It's a joint federal-provincial program. And it's being carried out at present in the about the southern two-thirds of the province with hopeful uh, extension to the north. Sounds like a monumental task, Gary. When do you hope to have it uh, complete? We're shooting. Uh, right now to finish the southern two-thirds of the province by 1980 and hopefully we're going to extend it to the rest of the province. Some of these sections, uh, recreation and wildlife, have finished a good portion of the province. Agriculture and forestry, we're still working on the uh, southern two-thirds of the province with uh, the lower mainland and Vancouver Island next year. How many uh, different categories of land uses are there, in fact, Gary? Well, what we're, we're separating is agriculture, forestry, recreation, and wildlife. And we're looking at the land's characteristics, the ability for it to sustain, sustain use in these different uh, sections of use. And urban sprawl, as we see here, is certainly part of it. That's right. This is quite true. Uh, this can't be avoided, and obviously, it's a very serious land use problem. We're looking at some of the diversity of land use in the province from one corner of it to the other. And certainly we have, as is, as is obvious, a uh, great diversity in land characteristics. And of course, the environments are very different from one of these areas to the next. We have such a range in climate and soil that it offers us a great diversity in land use. And you say that uh, this inventory is concerning itself only with part of the province. That's, that's right. At present, although it's, there's every hope uh, that we will uh, continue with the whole province, we're collecting information uh, on the climate and on uh, soils. And of course, the superficial geology goes along with this. Uh, these things, uh, along with the vegetation that grows on the, under these soils and climate conditions, and as well, we're collecting information on the animal populations that are utilizing this vegetation and soil combination. Surely your activities must be restricted to the summertime, are they, the actual surveys, Gary? Yes, this is true. All the field work is carried out during the summer season and uh, plotted on aerial photographs. Such as we see here. This is right. And these, in turn, are plotted onto maps. The uh, end product, of course, being a capability map for each of these sections that I've suggested, agriculture, forestry, recreation, and wildlife. Where, in fact, are you making your headquarters for this survey? The headquarters for the agriculture and forestry section is in Kelowna. The uh, rest of them, wildlife, recreation, and all the administrative work is done in Victoria. Now turning to individual sectors and looking at some of the diversity of agriculture within the province, some of its land use problems. Certainly, we divide our capabilities into seven classes, the best agriculture land being one, the poorest seven. Here you note an aerial shot of agriculture uh, being invaded by urban development. Of course, this is a problem, especially in the Fraser Valley and in the Okanagan, and it's one we can't avoid. Although the climate soil combinations are excellent for agriculture, they also have uh, uh, excellent capabilities as far as urban uh, 
development is concerned. There's a considerable amount of overlap in all of these areas, I should think, or a lot of the areas, not necessarily all of them, Gary. Yes, this is quite true. Uh, the uh, whole inventory is an interdisciplinary attempt at looking at land as a whole. And what we're attempting to do is have people work together, these different professionals, to look at land from their particular use point and come up with composite ideas on how we might uh, manage land, whether it be for agriculture uh, or the other sectors which we're going to look at in a minute. Certainly looking at rangelands here, there are some very difficult problems when we talk about integrated use or multiple use, abandonment of farmlands in areas which uh, have a very high capability for forestry, but climate climatically are very restricting for agriculture use. Here we note we're back to our maps again. And these are the, uh, the, the ultimate uh, objective of your uh, surveys are these maps. This is right. This, our, um, the maps are passed on to uh, line departments in provincial federal governments and to the regional districts for their planning and they uh, use these things as an inventory base. We're in the land information business, is what it amounts to. Looking at recreation lands, you can see the different uses that are considered. Uh, you know, the beaches, this is a flower shot, this is a collection of wildflowers or photographs. And uh, certainly we have a lot of other recreation uses like fishing, uh, viewing, and some of these uh, uh, uses. And of course, the winter activities such as uh, skiing on the various mountains in British Columbia. <clears throat> this is true. Wildlife, you note here, certainly this is important. Some of our very attractive landforms, like this volcano in Mount Adziza Provincial Park, uh, are all uh, depicted on our maps, really. Uh, we were talking earlier about uh, conflicts. What are some of the conflicts, Gary, and, and how do you think they may be resolved? Well, I think, I think one of our more important ones right now uh, is the conflict between uh, agriculture uh, land use and uh, urban development expansion in the two major uh, lower BC valleys. We have, for instance, uh, about a hundredth of one percent of the land area of BC that's capable of producing tree fruits. Uh, at the same time, the climates in these areas are, are almost ideal as places to live. So this is one of the main uh, conflicts. The others are, are more management conflicts. Certainly recently we've heard about the conflict on uh, ungulate winter ranges or wildlife winter ranges in the north and mining exploration. Sometimes there's only small areas involved, but they can interfere with wintering or migratory routes. How will these things, or how can they be resolved ultimately, Gary? <clears throat> well, I think in the first case, of course, uh, we uh, need inventory information to be able to make these decisions. Uh, once this is available, and we're already attempting this, uh, we are putting in uh, composite maps or uh, submitting composite maps of, of the different sectors showing what we feel as professionals are the best typical land use. The idea being that the planners then can utilize these things and uh, come up with uh, socially and economically feasible plans using uh, the physical uh, capability information as a base. Since the public is so largely involved, uh, are they going to have a voice in the final decisions? Oh, yes, I, I don't think there's any alternative. This uh, has to be. It's, uh, it's their land, if you like, uh, in quotes. And uh, certainly, I think uh, that this has to be the uh, thing that happens in the end, and that decision should be left to them. In fact, looking at some of the individual sectors, we saw slides of different recreation uses, uh, shorelands. Now looking <coughs> at forestry, which is one of our big uh, land resource users in the province. We have our problems with uh, transportation, uh, with regeneration, and certainly the uh, land capability information that CLI is providing is being used by the forest managers in thinking about the next crop. In a lot of cases, of course, we have environmental damage that is caused by uh, perhaps harvesting <coughs> this particular a generation of trees, and certainly a lot of it is still in inaccessible areas. The uh, forestry industry is uh, under a great deal of criticism at uh, a lot of times for misuse of forests. Do you think the, this is justified largely, Gary? Well, I, I don't really think so. There's always two sides to the story, and uh, obviously uh, a user always looks at uh, the 
tourist juice of his uh, alternate land user and uh, compares it with his best juice. And this is a very easy thing to do. Obviously, uh, say at the same time, I must confess that I'm not pleased with the, uh, some of the uh, harvesting practices and some of the uh, denuded, denuded or fired slopes. But this is not always the fault of uh, forest industry or the people in, any people in forest management. It's, it's a very difficult problem. All these things are so tied together with economics and uh, uh, if you like our wild, wild west heritage that it's very difficult to do uh, And of course they are in fact responsible for a great deal of reforestation themselves. This is right and these people are definitely uh, using the capability information and all the inventory information that their, the own, their own forest inventory people come up with. Looking at wildlife, of course our wildlife resource is very important in this province. Uh, key to them is the wintering ranges, and these are often in the valley bottoms or above tree line in some cases in the turn, in uh, case of goat or caribou. And uh, <clears throat> this, of course, this is a shot of a mining exploration uh, area where uh, there has some, been some damage, of course, that uh, has occurred. There certainly is, is conflicts with uh, wildlife in the winter range because too many people uh, or other animals compete directly for their key wintering habitat, and this carries them over to the next year, or they've had it. And this is just one of the many conflicts that we were talking about earlier. Right. <clears throat> Mining, of course, uh, is uh, another very important industry in the province of British Columbia, and uh, there is another industry that uh, does receive considerable amount of criticism, sometimes justified and, and sometimes other. But in fact, as far as the actual land itself is concerned, they're using only a small part of it. Is that not the case? This is true. I think in general, uh, we can be critical and say that in some cases, especially uh, mineral exploration uh, techniques uh, possibly should be reviewed and revised to take into consideration other resource users. And this is really what I'm talking about in general, that a multidisciplinary or multi uh, uh, specialty referral system so that every user is aware of what the other user is doing on the land, especially in government. This is, this is very important and then there is no use that isn't at least considered in exploration plans or harvesting plans uh, or any of the planning functions. Gary, this uh, undertaking of yours, the land inventory, looks like a, a long-range thing. When do you hope to have your final report in? For the whole province? Yes. Oh, I think, I think we're looking at the late uh, 1980s, uh, unless we have a real increase in staff. You uh, are dealing with quite a very large area. Uh, exactly what size is the area that you're concerned well, with? Well, of course, British Columbia, what, 366,000 square miles, and we're talking about two-thirds of that. We're maybe looking at, uh, what, 275,000 square miles. And uh, of that area, of that uh, huge area, how much, in fact, is being utilized? How much of that land is being put to uh, uh, useful work, shall we say? Oh, I would think that the majority of it is being used for something. <coughs> I suppose the real intensely used areas, uh, probably uh, um, 100,000 acres. I think that what we should look at, that there really is only one land. Let's keep our options open. Let's listen to the land with an open mind and avoid as many ecological mistakes as possible. I think this would be the... The key to the, the, key whole, to the thing. whole thing. Gary, thank you very much for a very interesting program. And the key to the whole thing is this land is yours.